Uh, several months ago, I uh, returned from a uh, month stay in Myanmar, which used to be called Burma. And that, that experience changed my life. I have been all over the world. I have gone to school uh, in Scotland. I taught in China. I've traveled all over. And I came back from Myanmar a different person. I loved every country I've ever been in, but that one country radically changed my life. I thought that I was a, a liberal back in the 60s, uh, working on uh, civil rights and changing the way America dealt with minorities. But I am at least that on steroids since my return from uh, Myanmar. And one of the one of the um, one of the things that I, I I understood or I got about Myanmar um, came from two Westerners, actually two English writers, uh, Roger Kipling and George Orwell. Um, Kipling um, wrote a lot of things, including poetry, and he wrote um, the um, a, a fairly long poem called Mandalay, and it has uh, the beginning. It says, uh, "On the uh, road to Mandalay, where flying fishes play, and the dawn comes up like thunder, out of uh, China's across the bay." Uh, he also wrote um, a poem called The White Man's Burden um, from high school years. I've never liked Kipling, but he was a group or represented a group of British colonialists and their understanding about what was important to the British and not necessarily what was important to the locals wherever the British colony was, and in this case it was Burma. Um, it's been 200 years, almost 200 years, since the, uh, the British uh, started their colonization in uh, Burma, and it uh, finally, at the end of World War II, in uh, the late 40s, uh, Clement Attlee uh, gave uh, Burma their independence. But before that, the other writer that uh, was also English was George Orwell. Um, most Americans will know him for uh, being the writer of 1984 and Animal Farm. If you haven't read either one of them, I'm suggesting to you to go to the library and get both of them. You, Animal Farm is kind of enjoyable. 1984 isn't enjoyable, but it is a warning of the potential future that we have. And so what we have with Kipling and Orwell are the personifications of the two major groups of people that were in Burma. Um, the colonialists that, that thought that was great and the other group that, while they were working for the government, like uh, Orwell was a, a police superintendent, um, and he was caught in a kind of a catch-22. He did not like um, to be the um, colonial ruler, overlord of, um, of the area. It happened to be the area of. Mulan, um, where uh, Kipling got um, his um, idea about writing the Road to Mandalay, um, and and what what Orwell was Orwell wrote this uh, short essay called uh, "Shooting an Elephant," and he explains his Catch Twenty Two about shooting this elephant 
and not really needing to shoot it because it wasn't necessary, but he was supposed to be the protector of the people. And yet, even though if he, if he, I mean, supposedly shot the elephant, but the people didn't like the colonial rulers anyway. So he was kind of caught between trying to help the locals get away from the colonial rule, but he also had to be a colonial ruler. So he was caught in that kind of catch-22. Now, Kipling and Orwell have both long gone. And yet there is kind of an image of both Kipling and Orwell that still resides not only in Britain, uh, but also in the United States. Um, there are people in America that are oblivious to social issues, racism, sexism, homophobia, equal pay, the gap between the rich and the poor. Those people who are oblivious are in the group of Kipling. Those people who are fighting on the opposing side are the Orwellians. And the question for you is, after reading this essay, the question for you is, which group do you buy into? It's a, um, I suspect that if you were to go to England today and ask the average English person what they thought of Kipling, other than he was a nice poet or a good poet, I think that a good number of them would think that, you know, he probably overstepped his bounds. Um, but that was a lifetime ago. And we're going through the same kind of thing in the United States, where many people are oblivious to the social issues that are facing this country. When their children grow up and their children have children, maybe those children will see things differently. But change needs to start. And my suggestion is that change starts with you. Read this essay that I have about Kipling and Orwell and think about it, not just in the British colonial aristocracy haughtiness, but think of how that parallels what happens in the United States. And choose wisely.